Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Friday, November 8th, here with a weekend market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets, the current market environment, and finish off looking at some sector analysis. So it was another strong week for markets. Uh, major indices closed towards their highs of the week. You can see on Friday, it was a uh, quiet session, mostly positive, Dow just inching into slightly negative territory into the end. Uh, five day change numbers still all firmly in green territory. And we are still above all of those simple moving averages across the major indices. If we scroll down and take a look at sectors this week, we have transport, semiconductors, and financials at the top. That's a powerful kind of trio there leading the market. And on the downside, we have utilities, we have staples, and we have discretionary uh, negative only three sectors in this market right now that are negative over the past five trading sessions. In terms of major markets, natural gas and oil continue to perform well, top of the list there, followed by the China market, Chinese market, FXI. On the downside, we have silver, we have TLT, and we have gold, uh, both or all three falling uh, pretty firmly this week, three all the way up to 7% for silver. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So if we dive into the charts here, take a look at the S&P 500. This is the cash market, and this is a weekly perspective here. This is a weekly time frame chart where each bar represents one week worth of trading. So when we look here at uh, this week, we again closed uh, almost 1% to the upside here, a little bit off the highs, but still all things considered a pretty positive week. This is now the fifth week in a row higher for the S&P 500. It's the sixth week in a row higher for, uh, I believe, the NASDAQ 100. So the uh, extension here to highs or this um, kind of persistent bid that we're seeing across U.S. markets right now and really global uh, has uh, continued to stick. When we look here at the chart, we are closing at all-time highs, so uh, all-time weekly highs, so there's no uh, overhead supply to contend with. Last week's video, we said, um, let's try and figure out uh, where we can draw some support or to measure sort of risk against. And I still like to use the same level we talked about last week, this 3,027 area here. This was effectively the breakout that occurred two weeks ago. So I would still wanna be using this uh, as a general uh, line in the sand. Right now, we're approximately 2% away from that level or above that level. Uh, you could also start to look at um, this recent slope here over the past five weeks. If you drew some trend line here connecting kind of uh, the recent ascent here, you could get uh, some shorter term measured move or um, measured risk against this maybe 30, 3050 level, kind of give you an indication of where the character of the market might be shifting a little bit. So those are kind of the two spots that I would be uh, looking at from at least a TA perspective here on this recent run. If we look at the volatility index, we take a look at VIX here, we're getting close to um, the lowest close of the year. So if we dial all the way back here and we just look at 2019 as a whole, uh, we got just, I think, 12, um, 12, uh, 1201 is the low close of the year. So basically volatility has been uh, at the very, very low end of the range has been right at 12. And we've been as high as, of course, 25 or so throughout the course of this year. Um, and, and really at the end of last year, if you remember, we got all the way up to mid 30s. Uh, but we've spent basically this entire year kind of chopping in this VIX range. We're at the very low end of it. It does make sense given where markets are. We're kind of cruising at all time highs with low volatility. So I don't know uh, that this is a signal in itself to suddenly just start shorting the market. I think you'd have to do a little more due diligence there, but it does speak to sort of the complacency out there and the fact that everything does seem quite good and rosy right now. And that's generally the time where, uh, even if it's not a big correction or a big pullback or a big market move, uh, you might get a little bit of a rug pull or a little flare up in volatility just to sort of 
keep the bulls honest. And that should be expected after the run that we've had, again, five, six weeks higher in a row, pretty much uncontested, uh, a VIX closing in on the year-to-date lows. You should expect where, um, you know, uh, a little bit of a, a shakeout uh, might be in the cards in the near term. So again, not an excuse to short. I have no short exposure on. I wouldn't take this myself as a signal. But if you're thinking about adding new positions or if you're hedging, all of that fun stuff, um, you know, these are the things you can start to think about. So VIX almost at year to date closing lows, S&P 500 at uh, all time highs. If we go to the Russell 2000, uh, Russell 2000 here spent the week chopping around at this very important spot. So the market is sort of recognizing here that this 159, 160 area is big stakes here for the Russell 2000. Uh, as most of the other major indices are all breaking out to new all-time highs, the Russell is contending with uh, its its you know Super Bowl of resistance here. Uh, it's been below this area since the third quarter of 2018. Uh, uh, we found resistance here in overhead supply. We've had a nice, again, we talked about this last week, but a nice 10% rally in pretty much a straight line from the bottom end of this range to the top end of this range. But we're putting in some very healthy, constructive looking consolidation here in the Russell. We're not getting a steep pullback in price. We're getting just a sideways consolidation through time. And those can lead to some of the most powerful continuation patterns. So when we look here at the Russell above 160 next week, could unlock another sort of rotational wave higher in terms of momentum or con or persistent bidding in this market. And that's something you need to be aware of. If we start to firmly reject here next week, if we start falling back into the old range and pulling back, uh, then that might uh, speak to maybe a more sideways or a sluggish or downside um rug pull shakeout market uh, for next week as well. So Russell 2000 at a key resistance spot. All of the other major indices, again, are pretty much trending cleanly with not much or no overhead supply. The Russell here is, uh, is, is, is battling with it. So let's pay attention to this market next week. If we go to the NASDAQ 100, finally, you can see new closing all-time highs here for the NASDAQ 100 as well. The trend has been higher here. We broke out above one 95 about two weeks ago. We really haven't looked back. We haven't given anything back. We meandered sideways here for most of this week. Uh, and then we finished kind of strongly here uh, into the end of the week. So the NASDAQ 100, again, uh, is staying kind of extended or frothy to the upside. But let's keep it in perspective. In the healthiest markets, uh, we tend to stay overbought. That is a uh, kind of a feature. It's not a bug in uh, kind of a bull market market or in a strong trend, we tend to stay overbought. And um, it, you know, isn't an excuse by itself to uh, look to, to, to get aggressively short. Um, so that uh, that is about it. I think that covers uh, basic notes there that I wanted to, uh, to to say on the market. Essentially, the chase is sort of on here, and that bid is uh, staying there. Uh, but let's um, let's be aware of where the VIX is, and just sort of know your time frame. And you know, as we speak to all the different traders out there that are approaching this from different time frames, that's that's going to be most important. So um, let's go to some other major markets. We'll go to TLT here, which really uh, saw a total. Uh, unwind and give back of last week's progress. So we had a pretty uh, constructive looking weekly bar last week. We talked about the fact that it was sort of a bullish engulfing weekly bar. It was occurring just over the uh, September low could turn into, you know, that's something that, you know, you could look back and say, oh, this, you know, that's the double bottom. That's that's where the, the second move kind of started. Um, but we, we got a total um, give back of those lows. So we close now at 135. We took out the September lows and now we find ourselves kind of back in or uh, kind of continuing this pullback, this consolidation pattern. When you look here on the weekly time frame, it looks a bit more innocent, uh, just given again the, the move that we had over the past year. Uh, if you go down to a daily chart, 
it looks a little bit rougher. It looks a little more extended, a little sloppy here. So all in all, TLT still in this sideways to down movement. Short-term trend is lower. We tried reversing it. We tried making a stand last week. That ended up failing. We're back to new lows here. So uh, kind of sitting on our hands. You get a little bit of momentum divergence going on. Uh, I, do, I would expect, you know, some sort of interested buyers as we start to get into the low to mid 130s. But we'll see if they can actually uh, kind of step in here so far. Uh, this was a tough week for TLT and um, we'll need more evidence that there is some type of short-term bottom. If we go to some other kind of safe haven assets, we look at gold kind of in the similar situation. This uh, didn't quite have as strong of a, of a pronounced sort of week as, as, as TLT maybe did last week, but it still showed signs of kind of being constructive here last week. And then of course you look at this week's bar and we've just given it all back. Volume still a little below the weekly average, but we clearly closed and just took out the past five or so weeks close or lows in GLD. So once again, kind of similar to TLT, we're kind of sitting on our hands again. We're still very much in a, in a fairly orderly consolidation pattern when we're looking here at a longer term time frame. Uh, but still, when you look at a daily chart or you're looking at refining that entry a little bit, uh, you're still kind of waiting here uh, in gold just the same. And silver really to round it out had uh, kind of the most pronounced downside move this week. It was 7%, which is quite a big move for, for silver. Notice it was still a little bit below the, um, the, the, the weekly average volume here, the 20-week moving average volume. Now, that has been on the rise, uh, but still, you didn't see a tremendous amount of volume here. But still, from a technical perspective, uh, it certainly does kind of give you pause here. It gives a little bit of, uh, again, just uh, sideways hesitation here as this now makes new lows, kind of comes back in and checks back to some of these levels from July of this year. So all in all, that's kind of the theme there for silver, gold, TLT this week. If we go to energy, uh, energy here did manage to close positive again. So USO, um, we talked about kind of that um, in the midweek video, we talked about sort of the upside pop here. We're coming back into this $12 area. There's a lot of overhead supply in here. So it's kind of messy. And especially on this daily chart, we're kind of at the uh, you know, you could call it the top end of this more recent immediate range, uh, but there's a lot of supply in here, so uh, it's it's tough to sort of navigate, but the trend is up. Momentum's still trying to stay firm here in the short term, so right now bulls have the ball in their court. And natural gas here also staying firm uh, this week. It was up 3.2%. Didn't quite close here at the weekly highs, but still kind of constructive, much the same, you know, kind of giving a follow-through week um, to last week's uh, move to the upside. Side. We were up 9% last week, another 3% this week. Again, didn't quite close at highs, so gives you a little bit of hesitation, but still bulls getting the job done there in uh, in that energy commodity space. So um, that, covers, uh, that covers the major markets. Let's start looking at some of the sectors from this week. So if we look at the five-day change numbers here, uh, we got financials at the top here of the five-day return. Uh, let me see, is something out of date here? Because I didn't see this. Okay, yeah, they, we were the, they were the number three, 2.44%. All right, yeah, pretty close here on the order. So financials, um, you can see on the week here, weekly chart, really making strides now. We're not closing at all-time highs, but we're certainly leaving the bulk of resistance. We're getting through this big area here, which had been uh, pretty much resistance, the bulk of resistance here going all the way back to January of 2018, uh, this 2850 area, call it $29. We still have the all time highs up here around uh, $30. We're getting close to it. I would expect a retest there in the short to intermediate term, but financials really uh, kind of getting a rotational move higher here, helping fuel the market, very constructive for uh, markets as a whole. Again, you can see when we look here at a daily chart, though, again, just know where we've come from. This slope is very very steep here over the past two weeks, especially for financials. Uh, take a look here at just the ground, the magnitude of this move. We're up 13% in basically a month worth of trading. So uh, a large portion of this rally has taken place. If you're buying in here, if you're chasing here, again, you have to just understand, um, you know, reward to risk and where you're kind of stepping in and where you could expect this to go. Um, so 
Obviously, uh, depending on your objectives there, uh, you'll have to consider that. But uh, otherwise, XLF looks good, certainly overheated. Uh, XLE was number two here on the upside. And we talked about this market still. Energy as a sector, uh, I think the worst performing uh, of the uh, entire market for 2019. Uh, doesn't mean it can't start to rebound here, but it is coming back into some resistance. It's kind of coming into the upper end of this channel that it's been um, kind of sliding in for most of this year. And, um, you know, when we look here a little bit closer, you can see a little bit of a pullback off of those highs. Uh, all in all, though, trend in the short term is up. This is where XLE has been failing. So uh, we'll see if it can kind of make it through this time around uh, for energy. Last but not least here on the top three semiconductors, SMH here, just beautifully kind of breaking out. Uh, really kind of a, a, a nice pattern all along. Just these little consolidations here behaving very uh, well technically just kind of three four five six seven day sideways moves then it breaks out then it consolidates and it just continues to kind of uh you know, basically pop uh, pop to a breakout and then and then consolidate and then break out again. Uh, we're, we're four days now kind of going sideways here. Again, extended to the upside, but a nice leadership group for this market. Uh, when we go to the downside here, uh, GDX, I'll skip that. Um, get to remove that one from this watch list. Uh, XLU on the downside here. So getting a little bit of a technical breakdown here in utilities. Uh, you can see $63. We had some support there. That's where it uh, found buyers stepping in for about a month or so. We broke down below it. We're coming back into the 61 area, which was the top end of resistance, kind of a breakout in August. Uh, so we'll see if we can find some support there. But XLU kind of in breakdown mode here, a little bit of a risk, um, you know, risk off here, uh, or I'm sorry, risk on in the market is, is basically means risk off for utilities. Uh, and I think we're seeing that right now as well. Uh, if we look at staples, not quite breaking down at all, just kind of going sideways here. It was slightly lower on the week, but still holding pretty firm in this consolidation here. $60 is kind of uh, the lower end of this recent range, $61.50 or so at the up, upper end. It's been consolidating sideways here for two weeks or uh, two months or so. Uh, so we'll let that kind of settle in. Last but not least is if we look at discretionary. Uh, discretionary here, did not really... Um, you know, breaking out with the market right now. Uh, we get a lot of uh, a lot of sectors and individual uh, indices kind of breaking out right now. We got discretionary ETF here, which is still kind of moving sideways here, not doing anything wrong, just taking its time and showing a little bit of relative underperformance now. Uh, uh, you know, in this uh, in this consolidation. So again, doesn't have to be a negative thing. We could see some rotation and a breakout here into uh, this sector of stocks. So let's keep an eye on it. But for now, kind of just coiled up here uh, and uh, wait to see this one move. So that's it. That's what I got for this week's uh, market recap video. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. Thanks as always for tuning in and watching. Every Tuesday and Friday we do these videos, market recap videos. You can subscribe on YouTube or follow us at The Trade Risk. Have a great weekend. Be back here on Tuesday for next week's mid mid midweek market video. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next time.